hey guys welcome back so today we'll be learning about anterior guidance so let's start seeing the figure just consider that this is the position of maximum intercuspation so as this is the position of maximum intercuspation the incisors and molars they are in their regular contact now whenever the jaws undergo protrusion on undergoing the protrusion or after protrusion what we see is in the anterior teeth there is edge to edge position whenever the anterior teeth comes edge to edge the posterior teeth there is loss of contact so this property in which the front teeth they ensure that the posterior teeth will lose contact on protrusion of the jaw is called as anterior guidance so in short whenever we protrude the jaw and on protrusion when we achieve the edge to edge contact of the anterior teeth there is disclusion or loss of contact in the posterior teeth so this is anterior guidance now this loss of contact is highly desirable in any type of dental processes but we would say why we de why we need the uh, loss of contact in the posterior teeth so here are the reasons now why loss of contact is needed first of all first and foremost reason is posterior teeth cannot take off center forces the posterior teeth they are only trained to take the longitudinal forces now whenever if uh, there is edge to edge contact of the anterior teeth in that case the posterior teeth if come in contact there will be lot of shear forces on them this shear forces may harm the periodontium of the posterior teeth and posterior teeth are not trained for that so posterior teeth cannot take off center forces or shear forces secondly the loss of contact of the posterior teeth they helps the elevator muscles to shut off and relax so whatever elevator muscles we have that is masseter uh, medial pterygoid and temporalis these three muscles they undergo relaxation whenever there is loss of post uh, contact in the posterior teeth further there is prevention of wear of the teeth now as we know that if there would be contact in the posterior teeth there would be shear forces and this shear forces would lead to wear of the posterior teeth so this is prevented and there is prevention of the tmj fatigue now as we know that if there would be contact in the posterior teeth there would be wear of the teeth further there would be muscular fatigue and this muscular fatigue is going to affect the temporomandibular joint and lastly in short it prevents the neuromuscular system fatigue now coming on to incisal guidance this is very important to know that incisal guidance is an another uh, very crucial determinant of the occlusion so first of all what is incisal guidance we will see so just see the figure that these are the maxillary as well as mandibular incisor in maximum intercuspation position the line which is green in color that is horizontal occlusal plane and we draw an another line which passes from the incisor edges of mandibular incisor as well as maxillary incisor so when we draw a line joining these two incisor edges in sagittal plane now the angle between these two lines is called as incisal guide angle now then incisal guide angle is a very important determinant for anterior guidance we'll see how now incisal guidance can be steeper as well as shallower and how this steeper or shallower type of incisal guidance it affects the separation of the posterior teeth that we will be seeing in the following figures in first uh, figure we can see that incisal guidance is steeper now how in this figure we can see that there is an increased overbite that is there is uh, excess uh, vertical overlap of the incisors now logically if we think that whenever this type of cases has to protrude the jaw the incisor has to cover this much path to come in edge to edge position as the incisor needs to cover excess or uh, more of the path there would be more amount of the posterior disclusion as there would be more amount of posterior disclusion we have scope to increase the cusp height of the posterior teeth if we increase the cusp height of the posterior teeth still we have the posterior disclusion maintained as so coming on to next case that is shallower incisal guide angle now in this case what the basic difference is the overjet in this case is slightly larger than that in this case in this case we had overbite which was greater that is vertical overlap 
whereas in this case we have horizontal overlap which is greater so now if there is increased overjet in this case the path which mandible incisor mandibular incisor has to cover is lesser than this case now whenever uh, in this case the patient protrudes and edge to edge bite is attained in this case the separation between the posterior teeth is very much lesser with uh, with uh, compared to this case now as the separation in this case is lesser here we need to decrease the cusp height in order to avoid the interference now to be very clear if there is steep incisal guidance the overbite has to be greater if the overbite is greater then only incisal guidance is going to be steeper in this case we can increase the cusp height whereas in case of increased overjet that is ho increased horizontal overlap the incisal guidance is going to be shallower in this case we need to reduce the cusp height coming on to factors controlling anterior guidance so the first and foremost factor is overjet and overbite as we have seen in earlier figures we'll just summarize it uh, in case of overjet if the overjet is increased so as overjet is increased this means that horizontal overlap is increased so this leads to shallow guidance as the guidance is shallower the posterior tooth separation would be less as the posterior tooth separation would be lesser we need to shorten the posterior cusp height whereas in case of increased overbite this means that the vertical overlap is increased so as the vertical overlap is increased whenever the jaw comes edge to edge the path which the lower incisor has to cover is much more than this case so as the path is uh, larger this means that the guidance is steeper as the guidance is steeper this leads to increased posterior teeth separation and as the posterior teeth separation is increased we need we can increase the cusp height of the posterior teeth but uh, in case of prosthesis whenever we harmonize the anterior guidance we usually prefer to give increased overjet rather than this because in case of increased overbite though we achieve the posterior teeth separation to much greater extent but the axial forces which falls on the anterior teeth they are much more larger with uh, respect to overjet cases because as the overbite is steeper the forces which the mandibular incisor exerts on the maxillary incisor it is much more larger than that of first case hence the axial forces in this case is uh, harmful to the periodontium of the anterior teeth so hence we prefer mostly the increased overjet in the dentition or in the prosthesis which we give to the patient to incisal level so as we can see in the figure the uh, adjacent incisors or their incisal plane should follow in the same uh, occlusal plane or they should be at the same level if they would not be at the same level the force which falls on the incisor on one tooth the force would be larger and an other tooth the force would be smaller so this is one point and another is the contact between the two teeth should not be too gingival if the contact is more towards the gingiva there would be more harmful forces which would be falling over the periodontium third is labiolingual curve so the uh, anterior teeth they should follow the la uh, labiolingual curve properly if the teeth are out of the alignment this is going to exert more forces over the periodontium and lastly the stable centric contact so the mandibular incisors should have a stable centric contact over the palatal surface of the maxillary incisors if there would be no stable centric contact the mandibular incisors they tend to supra erupt and this leads to more forces over the periodontium of the maxillary incisors and lastly the revision so first of all what we read is what is anterior guidance then its importance with respect to tmj with respect to dentition and why we need to incorporate it and judge it into the prosthesis then next we read about incisal guidance and incisal guide angle then next we read incisal guide angles if it is shallow as well as steeper and how the shallow or steepness of the incisal guide angle it affects the posterior cusp height that we read with the help of the figures and lastly we read about factors affecting anterior guidance in that first factor was overjet and overbite again linking it with the posterior cusp height then we read about incisal level that they should be at the same occlusal plane level then next labiolingual curve that it should not be out of the uh, alignment 
if it is out of the alignment it would again lead to more occlusal forces and lastly the stable centric contact so hope you guys you like the video if you like the video please like share and subscribe my channel akshay bandari's dental video see you soon in the next video thank you